Hey there, I'm Matt, and I want to help get you up to speed with developing applications with Olama using Python. I'm assuming you already know what Olama is and how to work with it. If not, I have a 10 minute video intro to Olama right here, which should get you up to speed on all the basics. But you want to start building applications that leverage it. Great. Let's start by looking at how to access the API. Olama has two main components. First, there's a client. The client is what runs when you type Olama run Llama 2. It's the REPL that you work with. The other main component is the service. This is what Olama serve starts up. Normally, you don't do this interactively. Instead, it runs as a service in the background. That service publishes the API. The CLI is just another API client that uses the standard public API, just like whatever tool you're going to write. The service publishes a few different REST API endpoints. You can find these at the GitHub repo under docs and then api.md. Let's start by reviewing these endpoints and I'll point out some things to keep in mind. It's pretty important to understand the underlying API before we can get busy with the Python library. There are a few different things you can do with the API. You can generate a completion using the chat or generate endpoints. This means asking a question to a model and getting an answer back. You can create, delete, copy, and list models. You can show model information, such as the Simpson prompt or template. You can push and pull a model to and from olama.com, and you can generate embeddings. Let's look at generating a completion. There are two endpoints here, chat and generate. Both can do exactly the same thing, but which one to use depends on your use case. If you're just going to ask a model a question as a one-off request and not ever hold a conversation with it, then using the generate endpoint makes the most sense. If you need to go back and forth with the model and manage memory or context, then the chat endpoint is more convenient. Again, you can do everything with both, but if it's just a one-off request, then managing the messages in the chat endpoint is a bit of extra work, which is only really valuable in conversations. Okay, so generate can be found at localhost port 11434 slash API slash generate. If you want to use the API on a different host, refer to this video that shows you how to host Olama on a different machine. For generate, there is only a single required parameter, model. This is the name of the model you want to load. If you call generate with just the model name and the model is already loaded, then the unload timeout will be reset to another five minutes with one exception that we're gonna talk about later. The prompt parameter is the question you want to ask the model. This will be inserted into the actual model request based on the template, either that's defined in the model or the template you specify in this request. Images is used when you work with a multimodal model, such as Lava. You can provide an array of images that are Base64 encoded. The model can only deal with a Base64 encoded image, so you must perform that conversion yourself. We'll see that this is a little different in the Python library. This is an array, but I haven't seen it do anything special with more than one image yet. Notice that the response is a stream of JSON blobs, each specifying the model, created at, response, and done. So most, if not all, of the endpoints respond as a streaming API. Each JSON blob includes a token. It looks like most of them are full words, but some of these responses show the parts of words or tokens. Scroll all the way down and you can see the last blob has done set to true and includes the context that you can provide to the next generate call. It also shows all the stats for this generation. You'll notice that it does not provide tokens per second, but you can just divide the tokens by the seconds to come up with that yourself. If you want the response to be a single value after the generation is complete, you can set stream to false. We can see here that the response shows all the tokens in the response joined together. If you set stream to false, then you have to wait till all the tokens are generated. Setting stream to false will not speed up the response and in fact may feel slower since you have to wait longer for that first token. But sometimes it's useful to turn streaming off if you're returning JSON. So that takes us to the format parameter. This only allows for a single value, and that is JSON. Using format JSON is more than just specifying the format value. 
You should also say something like respond as JSON in the prompt and ideally provide an example of the schema in the prompt as well. Otherwise, you run the risk of outputting a different schema each time you use it. The big array of numbers in this output is the context. If you want to provide this answer and continue the conversation with the model, pass this context to the next call that generate endpoint. But it's a bit of a black box that you can't really control. So if I know I'm going to need to hold a conversation, I'll stick with the chat endpoint. Options, system, and template just override whatever's set in the model file. Raw is there in case you want to handle the entire system prompt and template yourself entirely. There were some early users of the API that had a system that managed their own system prompts that needed this. This also removes the context from the output. Finally, there's Keep Alive. Keep Alive defines how long the model should stay in memory. The default is five minutes, but you can set it to any time you like, or minus one to keep it in the memory forever. If you provide just a number to this, then it will default to seconds. But if you provide it as a string, it has to include an S or M or H to indicate the granularity. For the chat endpoint, all the parameters are the same with a few exceptions. The context system and prompt parameters in generate are replaced with messages. Messages is an array of message objects that can include the system prompt, the prompt from the user, the examples of any output, and any memory or context that you want to send to the model. Each message has a role, which can be system or user or assistant. Content is the actual text of the message. And optionally, images is the array of images to send for multimodal models. I'll do some more complex examples later when we get to the library. The rest of the endpoints are a bit simpler and should be understandable using the docs. So let's switch gears to working with the Python library. You can learn more about it at github.com slash olama slash olama dash Python. One of the benefits of the Python library is that it simplifies the switch to and from streaming. The function calls return a single object when not streaming or a Python generator when they are streaming. Okay, so let's get into the code. This will be part of the video projects repo under intro dev python-2024-0402. First step is to add the Olama Python library with pip install Olama. This first example is 1.py. I'll start by importing Olama. The simplest example is just olama.generate and set model to any model. Remember, this is going to reset the keep alive parameter for this model. But let's set the prompt to something in 2.py. Why is the sky blue? And we can run it. Notice that we get the non streaming response. In the API, it defaults to streaming, but here we default to not streaming. I think this makes more sense, but changing the REST API means breaking a lot of code out there in the process. So that probably won't happen until there's a need for a new version of the API. Folks are usually pretty reluctant to do that. So add stream set to true in 3.py, but we don't get much of a response. So let's iterate through the parts of the output and write that out. But that's a bit hard to watch. So rather than printing the full chunk, let's print just the token and that looks better. We can add the stats at the end by looking for done is true. Durations of Nolama are measured in nanoseconds, so we need to multiply it out to be useful. In 4.py, we're going to make a second generate call that remembers the first, then save the value of the context from the last blob and feed it into the context of the second call. Here I've set the prompt to be vague so that we know it was using the context. We can try again without the context set in order to verify that it does what we think. Okay, now let's try describing an image in 5.py. I have a JPEG of my hand in this folder, this one. Unlike the REST API, which expects a base64 encoded string, the Python module expects the image as a bytes object. In fact, it won't work with a base64 encoded string. Then just have the model describe the image, and that worked just fine. Let's move on to using the chat endpoint. As we saw in the API section, it's pretty much the same thing with the exception of how messages work. We can try a simple example in 6.py. I'll just set a system prompt and then the user prompt. So that means defining an array of messages. 
Each message includes a role in the content. Then feed messages to the model and spit out the results. For 7.py, we'll do something a little bit more complicated. Using format JSON, an example schema, and some example outputs. You see the example in there? I specify a user said Paris, and the model responded with information about Paris. This helps the model understand what you need. So now when we ask about Amsterdam, we should get something interesting. There's one more thing I want to show you. Every call we've made to Alama has been local thus far. So HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 11434 was the base of the URL. But what if you set up a server that's not your local machine? I set up a Linux box on brev.dev and called it Matt's Remote Olama API. I installed Olama and pulled Llama2. Then installed Tailscale and set the machine name in the Tailscale admin to Matt's Remote Olama API. Then set Olama host environment variable to 0.0.0.0 and restarted Olama. Now in the code on my machine, change the Olama import and create a new Olama client pointing to the remote host. And now the code just works. I think the rest of the functions should just make sense. You'll find other examples using the code in this repo, which is the code for most of my more recent videos. If anything wasn't clear in this video, let me know in the comments below. It's hard to fix the video, but if it's a glaring omission, I can look at making a new video. And join us in the Discord at discord.gg slash Olama. Thanks so much for being here. Goodbye.